Good evening. Welcome to Darth Dragon Does Math. Today we are learning about inverse proportions. We have been learning about direct proportions. If you're thinking, those sound like different things. They are. They are in fact opposites. So let's talk about some candy. Let's say you went trick-or-treating and you are one person and you got 60 pieces of candy. You're very excited. But then you get home, and your mom's like, well, son, you should share that candy with your sister. And you reluctantly give half of your candy to your sister, because you're sharing it between two people. But what she really meant to say is you should share it with your sister and your brother. So you have two siblings now. Congratulations. So uh, you're sharing your 60 pieces of candy with three people, actually. Uh, and now, instead of you getting 60, each person's getting 20. And this goes on. She wants you to share it with your father now. And so you're sharing it between four people. So instead of getting 20 apiece, now you're only getting 15. And she's like, well, you should share it with your grandma, too. She loves those Reese's Cups. So now you're sharing it between five people, and everybody's only getting 12. And then mom looks at you, and you just know you gotta you gotta cut her in. So now you're sharing it with six people. So instead of you getting all sixty pieces of your Halloween candy, you only got ten because you divided it equally between six people. These numbers represent an inverse relationship, meaning the more people that you share your sixty pieces of candy with, the less candy each person gets. That is an inverse proportion, inverse relationship. Uh, basically, it, it, an inverse proportion is a relationship where as one quantity goes up, the other goes down. And it always goes down by the same ratio uh, down by the same ratio. That is a constant of proportion. Yes, the constant of proportion. It's there with inverse proportion, it's there with direct proportion. Just, it means a little bit different. So let me show you uh, how this works. So uh, this table right here shows the time it takes T hours for in construction workers to pave the road. Uh, and, and I should say, notice also here. All these numbers, if I, we've been dividing when it was direct proportion, we divided. What happens when we multiply? 1 times 60 is 60. 2 times 30 is 60. 3 times 20 is 60. 4 times 15 is 60. 60. 60. It's always 60. So in this particular problem, k is equal to 60 uh, in the equation would be inverse proportion, so direct proportion, direct proportion is y is equal to kx. Inverse proportion is xy is equal to k. So, a little bit different. Um, another way to write that would be y is equal to k over x. Now these, this, and this are the same thing, um, but and this is more helpful long term, but this makes it a lot easier to, to learn. So we're going to stick with this one um, for now, just so we can get our feet wet. So the table shows time it takes the time it takes t hours for in construction workers to pave a road. Tell whether t is inversely proportional to n. If so, find the constant of proportionality. So remember. To do this, we are going to have to take these two numbers. Instead of dividing 36 by 1, which is 36, 18 by 2, that's 9, they're not direct proportion. We multiply 1 times 36. Well, that's 36. 
2 times 18, well, that's 36. 3 times 12, well, that's 36. So it is inversely proportional, because when we multiply these numbers, they all equal 36. So the k, the constant of proportionality, uh, is 36. Hooray. And I want to point out, because I've, I've been seeing this on some homework, if you see constant, find the constant of proportionality, write out k is equal to 36, please. Tell whether the equation represents an inverse proportion. If so, find the constant of proportionality. So we're going to use x, y is equal to k. So if we can get it to say x, y is equal to k, we're happy. This one right here, the way we're going to do that, we are going to say, all right, I, the, I'm going to rewrite it. Maybe it helps. 5 over x. So if I did this, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, I would get y is equal to 10 over x. And that, remember, we can have this, or we could say y is equal to k over x. So that is actually this version. So that's perfect. So if you can get that, that's fine. Um, alternatively, to get rid of the x, get the x back up here, we just multiply both sides by x, and we get x, y is equal to 10 there, too. Either one is fine. The constant of proportionality for this one is k equal to 10. So this is a direct proportion. This one is 2. Now, here's, the, here's how I know, because x, y is already right next to each other. So I know that when we did direct proportion, if we ever added a number, we'd be like, whoa, hold up. Let's not do that. But here, but here, sometimes it works out. Not all the time, but sometimes it does. Because I have x times y, if I just subtract 9 from both sides, I would get x, y is equal to negative 7. Guess what? That's in, that works. I know we haven't been working with negatives, but that works. x times y is equal to a number k. So in this case, k is equal to negative 7. They, are, they both work. They're both inverse proportions. So try this one right here. Uh, then on the back, try those two. Oh, you can't see that. Hold up. Try those, those two. And I'm going to do this one. So we are working with graphs. Inverse proportion graph. Notice that it's no longer a line. It's kind of this curve, okay? Um, and you don't have to know what it's, it's in, don't worry about it. Uh, this curve is the graph of y is equal to k over x. Um, and so what we're doing, we're going to say the time it takes to clean a window in an office building is inversely proportional to the number of window cleaners, which makes sense. The more window cleaners are working, the less time it takes you to, to clean a building. Uh, the graph shows the amount of time in y hours, okay, so y hours that it takes to clean the window for the number of window cleaners working. So just like, uh, well, find the constant proportionality. So this is actually easier when we, when we get this, because all we have to do is find a point on the graph, so it found one for us, and multiply the two points together. 2 times 12. Well, that means k is equal to 24. So if you want to find the constant of proportionality of an inverse proportion, just multiply the two numbers together. And that, that makes sense. There's more numbers as it goes through. It goes through that point right there. That point is 3, 8. 3 times 8, 24. Excellent goes through this point right here. That point is 6, 4. 6 times 4, 24. Excellent. This point right here, that point is 12, 1. 12 times, excuse me, 12 times 2. 12, 2. 12 times 2, 24. Working out every time. Uh, even this point right here, go see that point right there. That point is 1, 24. 24 times 1, 24. So any point that it goes through, you're going to multiply them together and you're going to get the constant of proportionality. What does the point 212 represent in this situation? So we remember, this is about number of window cleaners, number of hours that it takes to clean the window. Words matter. So this is saying that it, if two window cleaners, it takes two window cleaners 12 hours 
to clean the building. All right. Um, let's move on to the back. This is you. Very similar question. Um, thing. There we go. Very similar question. Do that. Uh, this is me. Y is inversely proportional to X. So anytime I hear inversely proportional, I'm already going to go X, Y is equal to K. Just, in, just to get me started. So when Y is 20, X is 8. So this is like 8 times 20 is equal to K. I'm just plugging in those two numbers for X and Y. 8 times 20, we know what that is. That is 160. So that means K is equal to 160. Great. Find the constant of proportionality. Just did. B. Write an inverse proportion equation. Well, we found K is 160, so XY must be 160. Alternatively, Y is equal to 160 over X. Both work. Um, this is easier to understand. This is more helpful uh, when you get to upper level math. So, uh, C, find y when x is 5. So, find y when x is 5. It's actually easier to use the bottom equation here. So, I'm going to say y is equal to 160 over 5. Okay, 160 divided by 5. Well, that looks like 32. I believe that's 32. If it was 10, it'd be 16, so 16 times, yep, 32. So when x is 5, y is 32. So that's good to know. So there's a point 532 here. Now, if it says find x when y is 5, so d, if y was 5, so I'm going to actually use this one. So 5 times x is equal to 160. Solve that by dividing by 5. I get x is equal to 32 again. Interesting. So there is a point on this graph, not that graph, uh, this graph that would say the inverse proportional, where you have a point where there's a point that's 5, 32, and you actually have another point that's 32, 5, which makes sense. Because, remember, we're multiplying. 5 times 32 is the same as 32 times 5. So if you have a point like this, you also have the point that's reversed. So good to know. An auto repair garage, at an auto repair garage, the number of hours it takes to repair a car is inversely proportional to the number of workers working on it, which makes sense. The more people working, the less time it takes. It takes two workers six hours to repair a car. How long will it take four workers to repair the same car if they work the same rate? Now this is interesting because we can do, you know, two workers equals uh, six hours. Two workers, six hours. Is that the same thing as four workers? Uh, 2 times 2 would get 4, 6, seven, you think it's going to take 4 workers 12 hours? I, what I'm saying is, if we were to, to cr create this, does it make sense for 2 workers to take 6 and 4 workers to take twice as long? Probably not. So, I, don't do this. Don't, in... in if you got into a habit of doing this for the direct proportions, that's fine. This is really easy for direct proportions. But that's why we have to look closely. This is inversely proportional. So you cannot set it up that way. Instead, remember that we, oh, class is almost about to start, that we always multiply. So 2 times 6, we're, inverse means multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. So it's gonna, it would take one, out, one person 12 hours. If we have four workers, we say 12 divided by 4 would take three hours. And I just rushed the end of this, um, but I hope I was clear enough. Um, so how long will it take four workers? It will take them th three hours. Uh, the equation is xy equals 12. Um, anyways, so do these two. Um, 
If you have any questions, let me know tomorrow in class. Have a nice day. Sorry about the end.